How's it going everybody? So I'm back with another video this week. I got some really good feedback on the last video that I did and after consulting with some of my mentors, friends, and family, I decided to post every week. I'm going to be posting educational videos about trombone and music in general and I'll be posting every Friday. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm really excited about this project. I might expand to more days a week depending on what my schedule looks like. Um, so please stay tuned. Okay, so before we go on to discuss the topic of having great tone, or if you already have really good tone, improving your tone, or even maybe using some of these devices and elements in your own teaching. Before we go on, I just wanted to say that what I'm going to be telling you all is not for everyone out there. These things have worked for me and may not be for everyone out there. So if you have a different opinion, different philosophy, a different view on things, that's completely okay. If it works for you and your students and your teaching, then that's great. Keep doing it. I'm just going to share with you all the things that have worked for me as an individual. And I think hopefully a lot of you will be able to take at least one or two things from this and apply it to your own playing or your own teaching. Okay, so I'm going to try my best to be brief with this video but I want you all to keep a couple of things in mind. I'm gonna be using visualizations and analogies as I talk about these things, not to just make shortcuts or try to speed through things, but just to prevent overthinking. I'm sure a lot of you have heard the phrase paralysis through analysis, which is a very true phrase. It's The reason I know it's true is because it's happened to me many times. I'm sure it's happened to many of you out there if you've been doing anything for a long time. What happens is you start overthinking and start getting technical with everything and overanalyzing every single little detail. So basically, you lose focus of the big picture. So it's great to be focusing on details, but you always have to keep in mind the larger scope as well. So just keep that in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that a lot of the teachings and philosophy that I'm going to be talking about comes from the great late Prof Fielder, William Fielder, they also call him Bill Fielder. Some of his students include Wynton Marsalis, Sean Jones, Brian Lynch, Nicholas Payton, I believe. Uh, a lot of trumpet players. Uh, so to summarize his philosophy about music and sound, it's basically this phrase. Your sound is a mirror of your mind. Let me say that one more time. Your sound is a mirror of your mind. So just go ahead and let that soak in for a second. Okay, so on to the first thing. Before you even start playing, you have to address your breathing and your airflow. You want to have really good posture, but also be relaxed. If you've ever taken Alexander Technique, one of the things that they talk about, you kind of like pretend like there's a string on your head, like a, like a dummy almost, and someone's pulling it up, and that kind of straightens out your spine. Your chin lowers a little bit, kind of gets tucked in. You also want to think maybe of another string pulling on your chest. So you're kind of like this. So that should get you set up pretty decently regarding posture and being relaxed. So when you're breathing, just to kind of get technical for a second, you want to think about breathing through your belly and a little bit through your chest too, but very minimally. If you think about basically having three chambers in your torso, the lowest, the middle, and the upper, which is kind of like your lungs and all in the chest area. So when you breathe in, you want to think about filling the bottom first, the bottom chamber, then the next chamber, and then just, you know, whatever is left of the top chamber, which should be almost nothing. You should It should mostly come from the bottom chamber. When you breathe, you want to think about using a whole breath which kind of opens and relaxes your throat. And it's just a bunch of relaxed air coming in, warm air. From the bottom up. And you don't hold it in ever. So one thing I want you guys to think about when it comes to breathing and airflow is something that Wynton Marsalis had told my brother and I. Think about being on an ocean shore and the water coming up and coming down. It's just flowing. It never stops. It doesn't go up onto the shore and stop and then go back. That's how you want to think about your breathing. 
and airflow. Just whether you're just breathing, warming up, or you're actually playing. Okay, so let's apply this to an actual note. We'll start on an F. So it sounds alright so far, right? I haven't played too many notes yet this morning. Another thing we can talk about is activating the breathing muscles a little better. You can think about saying, hey, this is something I got from Ben McDonald. He's a great trumpet player in the Olympia, Washington area. He's actually all up the northwest coast from Portland up to Seattle and probably beyond as well. When you say, hey, it activates your intercostals and your diaphragm. So let's say you take a breath. Hey! But say it with, with some projection. And you can feel if you place your hand on your stomach and diaphragm in that area and say, hey, breathe in like we were just going over. Hey! So you want to activate those same muscles when you start a note. Breathe in, you're still relaxed, good posture, everything, thinking about the ocean shore. <sighs> Blow your air like you're saying, hey. Okay, so if the note hadn't sounded very great at the beginning when we were applying what we were just going over a second ago, then you can try taking out the t or the d of your articulation. So you can call these hoo breaths or oo breaths. You're just focusing on the oo, hoo. So what has worked for me in doing these hoo breaths is uh, very lightly just letting your lips sit together start to note because when you blow your air it'll open up the aperture as long as everything else is pretty set up without interrupting the beginning of the note very much it's a little easy if you place a two or do at the beginning of your notes to get the note activated but you don't want to count on that if you're trying to improve your quality of tone and you don't have to do that puffing like I was just talking about but for me that's what has worked if you have another technique or device Go ahead and use it. So. so let's apply that to the F again. You're not actually saying puh. It's just getting everything activated because if your aperture is already open when you're playing a note, it may not respond. Your muscles and your air may not respond right away. So that's kind of what it does. You're not actually pressing your lips to say uh or mm. You're simply placing them together and puh is the only thing I can think of. This is something I actually got from great trombonist Ross Holcomb, who is now down in Florida and back home playing in orchestras down there and teaching. So try that pub breath when you're doing your long tones. So as you're doing your long tones, another thing you can think of to open up your sound is think about your sound being like an opera singer. Someone like Pavarotti would be a great example since he was a tenor. So Pavarotti, just think about oh, oh, oh. Now the mechanisms are a little different when it comes to activating the muscles such as the diaphragm and intercostals, but you're thinking about tone quality and very open, free. Oh, oh, hey, hey, oh. You're doing that with your air, that big open sound with your air. Oh. So finally, you can go ahead and apply this to the rest of your playing. 
the way I've been playing might be oriented a little more towards classical playing, but that doesn't have to be the case. You can apply the same concepts to your jazz playing. So there you go. Feel free to leave any thoughts, comments, requests, any of your own experiences with sound and tone. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And I'll catch you all next Friday. Peace.